sun goes down, that starts the beginning of a new day. And the evening and the morning were the first day. So your day don't start at 1201. It don't start in the morning. It starts in the evening. So really, brothers and sisters, it should have said that the Passover would be Saturday, March 31st. Because remember, when Friday, when the sun goes down in the evening, it starts a new day. So, but for the sake of today's lesson, it says Friday at evening, March 30th, which we know is Saturday, okay, is the Lord's Passover. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to subtract 14 days. Go back to Leviticus 23rd. Read verse 5 one more time. In the 14th day. 14th day. Of the first month. The first month. At evening. At evening. Is the Lord's Passover. Is the Lord's Passover. Now, what's, four, what's 30 minus 14? Again, March 30th minus 14. What do you get? 30 minus 14 is 16. 14 days is really two weeks. So subtract two weeks from March 30th. You get March 16th. So God's New Year's Day 2018 is March 16th. And 14 days after that is the Lord's Passover, brothers and sisters. How many of y'all going to be in church <laughs> New Year's Eve on March 15th at sundown? See, brothers and sisters, the question on tonight's show is, are you a Christian? Christian. Which is really, are you a follower of Christ or a pagan worshiper? So we didn't did a few already. We've already done uh, Easter. We've done Christmas. We've yeah. done New Year's Day. Let's deal with the cross, brothers and sisters. For those of you all who have a cross around your neck, it doesn't matter why you wear the cross or what you was told about the cross, brothers and sisters. It's what you can read. It's what you can read. Let's go to the Wikipedia and let's find out about this cross, brother messenger. We got a lot of information here, but go to your Wikipedia. Let's find out about this cross. Go ahead. <clears throat> From its simplicity form. The cross has been used both as a religious symbol and as an ornament. The cross is an ornament and they use it as a religious, religious symbol. symbol. This image of the cross. Go ahead. From the dawn of man's civilization, various objects dating from periods long anterior to the Christian era have been found marked with crosses of different designs. Hold on. Let me show you crosses of different designs, brothers and sisters. All these designs come from different countries, whether it was in Egypt, whether it was a Celtic cross, whether it was a Latin cross, whether it was the cross of the sun, whether it was a swath sticker, whether it was any other cross, a Tau cross. All of these are images and symbols, brothers and sisters, from these nations, pagan worship. Continue, brother messenger. In almost every part of the old world, India, Syria, Persia, and Egypt have all yielded numberless examples, while numerous instances dating from the latter Stone Age to Christian times have been found in nearly every part of Europe. Stop right there. Now, let's go to the New Encyclopedia Britannica. Mm. Let's go to the New Encyclopedia Britannica and find out what it writes about Tamaz, brothers and sisters. Tamaz, which is where this Tau cross came from. They took the first letter of this god by the name of Tamaz name and they created this image and it was the image of a cross. This pagan god Tamaz. Let's read what it says. In Mesopotamia, religious god of fertility embodying the power of new life in nature in the spring. We go back to springtime, brothers and sisters. Just like spring had a goddess by the name of Easter, it had a god by the name of Tammuz. What was he called? This nature god uh. was associated with two yearly festivals, one held in late winter 
and the other in early spring. So we got two festivals by this goddess, God by the name of Tammuz, brothers and sisters. Now, when did the Christians first start using this cross as a religious symbol? And again, God didn't give it to you. Let's find out who did give it to you. Let's go ahead. It was not <clears throat> till the time of Constantine. Oh, it wasn't until the time of Constantine. A Roman emperor, brothers and sisters, go ahead. That the cross was publicly used as the symbol of Christian religion. Mm -hmm. Till then, its employment have been restricted and private among the Christians themselves. So it was restricted to be a religious symbol, although some people who practiced Christianity kept it hid in their homes because they gave into being pagan worshipers, although they called themselves Christians. See, just because you go to church, it doesn't make you a Christian no more than you standing in a car or, or garage makes you a car. Let's go ahead, my brother, uh, about under Constantine. Under Constantine, it became the acknowledged symbol of Christianity. Now, brothers and sisters, Constantine was in a war for power, and he had a vision, and the cross was a part of this vision that he had while he was in this war. Let's read it. Constantine's action. Constantine's actions was no doubt influenced by the vision which he believed he saw of the cross in the sky with the accompanying words in Tuunica. By this conquered, as well as the story of the discovery of the true cross by his mother. St. Helena in the year 326. So it wasn't until the 300s, brothers and sisters, that the cross began to become used as a religious symbol. But again, what does the cross have to do with Christ? Matter of fact, let's go ahead and go to the Bible, brother messenger, and let's go to the book of Exodus, the 20th chapter, verses 1 through 4, and let's see what the Lord says about using images or religious symbols to represent him. Go ahead, Brother Messenger. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Okay. Out of the house of bondage. Uh-huh. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. So, not the God of Tammuz, not the God of spring, Easter, or Esther, not the God of Christmas, which is really Horus, the sun god, the winter solstice. Don't have no other gods beside me. Don't be a pagan worshiper. Go ahead, verse 4. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Stop right there. Thou shalt not make to me what? Any graven Stop. image. Any. That includes your cross, brothers and sisters. That includes your praying hands. That includes the doves, brothers and sisters, the fish on the back of your car. I don't want any images. Thou shalt not make, go ahead, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. What's in the water? Fish, right? Yes. What's in the sky? We see doves fly in the sky, right? Yeah. None of those images, I don't want them, brothers and sisters, because if you're supposed to worship me in spirit and, and in, in truth, truth, have you ever seen a spirit? Faith, brothers and sisters, is the belief in something that you cannot see, but there's evidence of its existence. If you got faith in God, this spiritual being, brothers and sisters... Enough to not have a cross, enough to not have praying hands, enough to not have a fish on the back of your car with the word Jesus in it, enough not to have cross around your neck, brothers and sisters. Believe in me. You don't need nothing to represent me. I represent myself by my creation, by the fact that I put breath in your body to breathe every day. <laughs> and can you see the breath yeah. that you breathe? It's invisible too, because it's his spirit. Finish that out, brother messenger. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. <clears throat> For I, the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon children unto the third and fourth generations of them that hate me. Now, brothers and sisters, again, this cross... Tammuz was mentioned, brothers and sisters. Now, we got the birthdays of all the gods right here, born on December the 25th. All the gods that represented the sun, all the major gods in each, brothers and sisters, society, 
You got Horus, you got Osiris, you got Addis, you got Zoroastrianism. And wait a minute, we found another god on here. What is it, Brother Messenger? Tamaz. Tamaz, brothers and sisters. The one that was a symbol of the cross and the T even before Constantine was born. Hmm. Are you a Christian or are you a pagan worshiper? You may not know that you've been celebrating these pagan holidays. You may not know that you've been participating in these pagan rituals and these pagan activities, brothers and sisters. But we're showing you in the Bible tonight by the word of God that he told you not to do what your church has been teaching you to do. Now, this says right here, I want to show you something, brothers and sisters. Why did the Roman Catholic change their Bible when it came to the Ten Commandments? All these things that we're showing you came from the Roman Catholic Church and was instituted as religious customs, although they were pagan. I want you to read this. What matter of fact, let, let me let me read this and you read that. Okay. I'm gonna read the Catholic Bible, you read the King James Version. Yep. Now again, we're talking about images and crosses, which you see a lot of in the Catholic cathedrals and churches. Let's read it. Here's the Ten Commandments of the Catholic Church. I am the Lord thy God, thou shalt have no other strange gods before me. Read yours. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Commandment two, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Well, thou shalt not make any unto thee any graven images or likeness of anything that is in Hold heaven. Oh, wait a minute. So in the King James Version of the Bible, the second commandment says thou shalt not make to thee any graven images. Yes. Well, in the second commandment in the Catholic Bible, it says thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Why did the Catholics remove from their Bible thou shalt not make any graven images, brothers and sisters? Hmm. Because this is what they are guilty of. The Bible told them don't do it. They are doing it and they removed it from the Bible. They removed it from the Ten Commandments. Let's do it one more time. My first commandment then in the Catholic Bible says, I am the Lord thy God. Thou shalt have no other gods, no other strange gods before me. Go ahead. Thou shalt not, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Okay. Second one. Thou shalt not take the Lord thy God in vain. What's your second one? Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. So you're going to believe the Roman Catholic Church, or you're going to believe the word of God?